Hey, it's Dan of Danish 411 Guitar Lessons, and I got a couple updates I want to tell you about. This week I recorded quite a few lessons that are going to be coming out over the next couple of weeks. So if you're not a fan or a subscriber yet, be sure to like, subscribe, and share because there's all kinds of cool stuff that is coming up. Uh, today, I actually recorded two tapping lessons. One is over pentatonic, where I'm going to be showing you how to do stuff like this. That's more pentatonic. And the other one is diatonic, which sounds more like this. And I put a lot of different variations in those lessons. I think I put like eight different variations. And there's a lot of muscle confusion exercises in there that you may not play. Like you may see some of these things and you might think to yourself, well, oh, that's a little bit too much for me. I can't play that right now. But just by practicing them, just by exercising with those muscle confusion exercises, confusing your fingers, confusing your brain, it'll help you become a better, faster, more fluent player. It's kind of like, you never forget how to ride a bike. But if you haven't ridden a bike in 10 years, you're gonna be rusty, right? If you haven't played the guitar in a while, even if you know how to do all kinds of crazy stuff, you're gonna be sloppy. When I was younger, I did uh, martial arts, I rode skateboards, and I would come back after months or maybe even years of not uh, doing these things, and I'd be rusty or I'd be sloppy. But sometimes, which I find interesting, sometimes you're actually better or you actually improved. And I think the reason that is is because we learn through osmosis sometimes by seeing others doing things, by thinking about things. And if we've learned something and then we step away for a while, that's good about music too. Like when you're recording music, step away from it for a while, right? And then when you come back to it, you have a new set of ears, right? You can hear it differently. When you're playing, sometimes take a break, step away from it for a while. Because when you come back, yeah, you might be a little bit sloppy, but sometimes you might actually have thought about it so it no longer is explicit. You're no longer constantly thinking about what you're doing. It starts to become more tacit, more implicit, and you can just pick up the guitar and play the way that you want to or in a way that you weren't able to before just because you've grown internally. And that is something that does happen. I don't exactly know what the science is behind that, but I know that sometimes practice, 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 practice can actually put us into a rut and if we put the thing down and step away from it for a while we come back and we, we can actually play a lot better. So over those uh, couple lessons I do some muscle confusion exercises. I think I got uh, some lessons that are coming out this week and the next couple of weeks that are also more licks and tricks type lessons that have some muscle confusion in them helping you understand how to play different things and not only playing things that are musical, but also playing uh, different licks and tricks that are, are more exercises, but you can also make them musical. And that's kind of one of the things that I try to do is I try to put um, exercises in my lessons that, yeah, you can do these musically. But at the same time, that could be just be an exercise, like an alternate picking exercise. which helps you train your synchronization and your fingers, you know, puts all that in your brain, helps you play more intuitively and things like that. Yeah, so now that I'm thinking about it, if you're watching this on the day that it comes out, then you're probably seeing this in between a set of phrasing lessons that I have. So we got the phrasing lessons and then we got the tapping lessons. The phrasing lessons are pretty interesting because all the ones that I made for phrasing are helping you understand, and I kind of build on each one. Like the first one starts out with a certain set of phrasing techniques, then the next one gets a little bit different, next one gets a little bit different. I did one on dad bends, I'm doing one on pinch harmonics or harmonics in general. I'm doing another one on vibrato, I'm doing another one on double stops. So all of them together, we can take these kinds of phrasing exercises and put them together and be able to play a lot more uh, dynamically then you might be playing if you're just playing scales. A good example of that would be just taking something like this, which is in your A minor box, and going from that, which just sounds like an exercise, and then adding bends, adding double stops, adding harmonics.
adding just all kinds of different stuff in there that changes the way it's phrased. Even though I'm playing the same four notes, just putting them in a different order and changing things around. Over the next few weeks, we got those phrasing lessons coming out. We got the tapping lessons coming out. I'm working on some music right now. I haven't put out a song in a while, so I'm gonna be putting out another song pretty soon. I think the last one I did that was an instrumental was Arrhythmia. And I'll be putting out another song pretty soon. And then I'll probably start uh, focusing on uh, some more writing because I did some uh, lessons on writing music, writing songs, writing leads, things like that in the past. I want to come back and do some more of that kind of stuff. So I'm going to have some more of that coming out pretty soon and some more songs, which means more backing tracks in my Patreon, which means more lessons focused on songwriting and playing leads over songs and things like that as well. So if you're interested in learning more, then of course I've got that free course out there. It's at tinyurl.com slash danh411. And that's my free seven day course that helps you unlock the fretboard, see the circular nature of the fretboard, see how the scale shapes themselves lock together like puzzle pieces. So you can pick up the guitar and just play solos and leads over any song and any key. And then of course, by knowing that, by understanding scale shapes, by understanding scales themselves, it's gonna help you be able to play pretty much any song you want to, whether you're playing a solo over it or trying to learn the song itself because it all kind of relates back to the chords as well. And then of course, one of my big things is by learning this this way, you're able to pick up the guitar and go, right? Just play when you want to, how you want to, put it into your muscle memory and be able to improvise when you want to, be able to play intuitively when you want to and not get stuck in the rut of uh, scale shapes all the time. Because this is theory right here. This is what theory basically is. And if you look at that, you're thinking to yourself, you know, there's seven positions and scales. So there's like seven Phrygian positions, seven Aeolian positions, seven Ionian positions. And when you're thinking about modes and different emotions when you're playing and things like that, you're probably thinking to yourself, that's a lot to learn. But over seven days, I'm going to show you how to stop thinking about it that way and start thinking about it in terms of circular patterns. So not only is the fretboard circular, but the scale patterns themselves are circular. And if you don't want to do this, learn all this, then this is really going to help you. So my free course is at tinyurl.com slash danh411. And I don't think the theory is bad. You know, I want you to continue exploring and continue to learn more theory, keep adding more to your bag of tricks. But if you want a shortcut, just so you can be able to pick up the guitar and play the way that you want to express yourself the way that you want to, then that's what my free course is going to help you do. So I appreciate you checking out this video. If you want to know more, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Get the free course. Come back on a weekly basis. And let me know in the comments what you think. And I'll see you in the next one.